All right. Well, uh, welcome, Don Zappia. Uh, I, I call you Donnie or Mr. Z. Uh, I, I, wanna, I wanted to have you on um, because, well, I know your sons. Uh, they've actually been guests on the show uh, previously. Yeah, and listen to them. Yeah, and, and I think I think that uh, they they got their work ethic from you for sure because well I mean and your wife <laughs> I don't want I don't want to get in trouble with her <laughs> you know, a lot of trouble if you don't put that one in there actually Lori is a hard girl so and yeah I just hung up the phone with her she's in Baltimore right now so nice nice yeah um, she's 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 back flying so that's awesome yeah. yeah. Uh, no, what I what I wanted to do, I wanted to have you on because you have a very unique story, in my opinion. You have a you have a great story. You have uh you know the 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 true American comeback story. You you had a super uh, awesome restaurant business, restaurant bar business. You you turn it from a local pub to a awesome martini bar, which I think was probably a little ahead of its time. Yeah, we talked um, about the other day, so yeah, <laughs> and then and then. And then you, you know, you basically lost everything and not to get too personal, but you lost everything. And then you moved away, you regathered everything, you kind of reset and you came back and you came back better than ever. I mean, you're crushing it now in real estate and, and that's why I wanted to have you on. So welcome. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jeremy. But actually the, I, you caught up with me and actually not really, but when we first moved into the neighborhood and you were part of the neighborhood there when you. You guys are still wet, wetting your pants. But uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, is that before the restaurant and all that, there was a chapter in my life that you, you might not remember. I, w I worked for UPS for almost 20 years, a little less than 20 years. And I was uh, operations manager on the fast track going up, you know. And uh, right. believe it or not, and I was just talking to uh, uh, an old part-time supervisor that worked for me. And he goes, did you like that job? I go, you know what? To this day, that was my favorite, favorite job. I, I never regretted waking up in the morning and going to work. I, I loved that job. And uh, over the really? years, cl yeah, closer to 17 years, um, I ended up walking out of that job for a couple other reasons. So there I was. Uh, and, and you got to go back. I'm trying to think what year it was. I think it was 96, 97, somewhere in there. So you're looking at, what is that? Almost 40 years ago? No. Yeah. No, 30, no, 30, 30 years. 30 years ago, right? 1997, yeah. right? 20, yeah, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. So 30 years ago, so I walked out of a job making, I was probably making $105,000, $110,000 a year back then. Wow, like back then. Money, you know, that was crazy money, plus stock options and stuff like that that I got granted there. So I walked out of there, and I can remember the day I walked out of there. I walked out of there and took the step outside the doors and there was a big parking lot there. And I just looked, I went, oh God, I just went from $110,000 down to zero, you know? And that, that was my thought going in, in walking to my car. And uh, that car, I had a brand new F, it was a brand new F-150. And I'm like, how am I gonna pay for this? <laughs> Let alone now. <laughs> so, so basically, you talk about a hardworking person and, and accolades out to my wife. I, I didn't know what to do. I was beside myself. You know, 17, 18 years working for UPS, woke up every day, and that's what that's what I did. I mean, and before that, I was in the restaurant business. So, um, my wife actually kicked me in the ass because I was sitting at my desk, just like, what am I gonna do? She goes, uh, you better do something. You better do something, whatever it is. You better help your ass and do it, you know. So, so I mean, she kicked my butt, and uh, we ended up. I ended up, believe it or not, I opened up a transportation consulting company. Um, and t timing is everything, right? So I opened up this transportation consulting company because at UPS I was a DOT certified instructor. Okay, mm. so I figured, you know what, the transportation department was a complete wreck back then because New York State at that time was coming in with a lot of DOT regulations that the transportation companies could not did not know how to execute them. And UPS is very, very good at doing stuff like that. And I learned that. So timing is everything. So as I went into the transportation consulting thing, deregulation of transportation came in. So all these little uh, regional carriers Boom, went out of business. Right. 
So the last thing they wanted to do is hire a consultant. A consultant, yeah. Yeah, and spend more money, you know. So so, so that didn't work out real well. Even though I did pick up a client, I picked up a, a client called Softco, who actually got bought out by U.S. Foods at that time, and they were in, in DePue oh. and Walton Avenue. Okay. And uh, so I went from there, and as I was working for them, and that's when I bought the restaurant. So I was working for the um, Softco and bought the restaurant at the same time. <clears throat> And at that time, I put my wife, who never really ran a restaurant, she was a waitress, basically running that restaurant, and I was running it be at the desk, <laughs> so back and forth. So that's how we ended up buying the old pub. So that's yeah, and and I mean to go from to go from the you know uh, you or is it UPS you said right? Yep. To go from UPS to the transportation consulting, then restaurant and and you've you've had experience in restaurant before that i'm assuming or yeah, was this well, just like so, i've always wanted to do it so my my growing up i mean my weekends um my dad had a restaurant and my weekends were yeah. waking up in the morning on saturday and sundays and going in and cleaning the toilets and the vacuuming the rugs and stocking the bar and stuff like that and i can remember the day that i told my dad hey i joined football so i really can't go to the restaurant on saturdays because that's when our games are um, so, and he got real mad at me. So what are you <laughs> who's going to clean all this stuff up? So, I mean, I, that was, you know, that was my football career, you know, and, and fought that with my dad, um, growing up that, you know, I don't know what you're doing at that football thing. You ain't making you no money, you know? Um, <laughs> but I had an admiration that I was going to be a pro football player, but it, that didn't work out either. So, right. but, but, but yeah, so I grew up in the business. I grew up in the business, um, um, funny thing is, is as I grew up in my dad's business, I was always in the back kitchen. I was always the cook. I was always the chef. I was always the prep guy. Um, at age 14, um, I did all the ordering, did all the scheduling for the whole back. Oh, wow. So, wow. Uh, in my dad's restaurant, now go back 1970s. Okay. Right around there. Um, the place was doing over a million dollars a year back then. I mean, it, that's holy like, crap. We used to sell a thousand pizzas on a Friday night, thousand pizzas on a Saturday. It was just a crazy, crazy restaurant. Wow! In South Buffalo. Wow. So, yeah. So, so that's my experience in, in the restaurant industry. But my dad would never let me bartend because I was too crazy to be in out in the front of the house. Only he kept me in the back of the house. So there's a little <laughs> of my uh, younger son Shay. So. I was, I was saying, I was saying, so that's why you stuck Shay in the back. Yeah. <laughs> but I had, but I had a mind for the business. You know what I mean? I mean the yeah, the very. That's how I ended up doing the order. I mean, I was talking to salesmen that were three times my age, going, "No, I ain't buying that. Give me a better prey." I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> negotiating with these guys at age fourteen. So, so I mean, that's amazing. Was, but but that's where it was. And then I left my dad, and I ended up working at a couple uh, for one summer. I ended up working um, at a couple of uh, beach bars down on the beach, uh, you know, down Mulligans and area and stuff like that. And, um, I had to get out of that because that basically almost killed me that, that job basically between alcohol and other substance, I had to get out of that, that, that environment. <laughs> and actually I applied for the job at, uh, Salvatore's Italian gardens as a bartender. And again, Oh I, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I ended up working for him. That's where I met Lori. So, and, uh, that's, right. that's how the romance started, you know, then had Chad, Shay and transferred to Rochester. And then when we got back into the neighborhood, that's when we moved from Rochester back into, uh, Buffalo, New York. So, Buffalo. Yeah. Wow. So, so then just, just real quick, like, I, I, I think you summed it up there. You got to where you are right now because of hard work. I mean, uh, you know, it could be a little bit of luck. It could be a little bit of connections, right? You, you knew the right people to get into certain areas, but Ultimately, it, it boils down to you worked your ass off to get to where you are. You you did a ton of different jobs, and and you got to where you are there. And we're gonna we're gonna go back into you know the Simmies day, right? Where you guys you guys worked it up from. Like I said, it was it was like a little small pub restaurant that turned into a martini bar that was like I said in my eyes ahead of its time because. You know, I, I I don't even remember the years that you had it, but you had it when we were in like I want to say Shay and I were in middle school, mm -hmm. and then you had it until shit after probably you closed down in like two thousand and like seven eight seven 
seven. seven. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so when you, when you go, when you go that long and you, I mean, the transition was beautiful. It, it went, you know, it kept on progressing. The, the, the area just wasn't up, up ready and ready for it, in my opinion. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, first of all, we bought that little pub and I paid too much money for it uh, when I bought it. I, I bought it for $187,000. And uh, it, it, as I look at it today, I, I spent too much money on it. The place was basically, and, and call, call that just doing it because you, you want to do it. You, you know what I mean? I didn't care about right. it. I didn't care. And um, the place was falling down. I mean, the roof was leaking. The basement was a mess. That I mean, no matter where I looked, you walked in the bathroom floor. If you stood there long enough, you would fall through. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's everything possibly went in there that was wrong. So being the, the nutcase we are is that we went in there and we gutted and gutted and cleaned and gutted and cleaned and rebuilt and and made the, the greasy little spoon um, a nice pub i mean it really was a cool little pub you know yeah remember we bought it like two years after we bought it i think new york state came to the law saying no smoking in restaurants and we were nervous because smoking in a beer smoking in a vodka go together and we were wondering right who's all our clientele but i can remember the day that happened i was so thankful on the other side because i couldn't i'm not a smoker i couldn't stand the smoke I mean, every day oh. I go in there and clean the TV with, with Windex and, and the TV was just, or the rag was just pure yellow. And all I could picture is that stuff all over my face, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, so so that's when we bought that place. And uh, like you said, we, we bought it, we ran it. I, I think it was three years we had it, three, four years. And I had this envision of making this thing bigger than what it was, okay? And that's what we did. We actually blew out the building, went upstairs, and again, talk about putting yeah. too much money into something. We put a lot of money into it, you know? Yeah. Um, but when it was all done, it was absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous. You know, it really, and it did it did some business. We had it actually, I think it's 11, 12 years total, you know, in the restaurant industry, okay. which, you know what? And our biggest, a couple things hurt us back then, Jeremy, is that the... Lancaster was going through some growth problems too, and Lancaster needed to redo all the roads. I don't know if you remember that or not. Yeah. Um, and they shut down. Aurora was brutal. Yeah. Aurora was nuts. I actually had to pay, uh, park at the Aurora school and actually walk down to my restaurant, which is probably about three blocks, maybe, maybe two and a half blocks. And so picture you owning a restaurant, and as the owner, you can't even drive to your restaurant. you got to walk to it. So you think right. customers, and it was on both ends. You couldn't get down from Broadway to our restaurant or from, you know, the school to our restaurant. It was blocked off. And so nobody was coming. And, you know, we back then, I can remember talking to Chad. Chad was really good with technology and, and tracking stuff and all that. So we started collecting people's emails and stuff like that, and addresses, and Chad was kept constantly put into an email, e email um, or a database and blasting things out to people. You know, we were, thought we were so techy back then. And, <laughs> and we realized that about 65% of, of our clientele was from out of town. Really? It was outside the Lancaster area. Yeah. So, percent which we thought was like crazy you know because we never thought we attracted that much people that many people into the area and and with that so with the the, the town ripping up the roads and all, we and that was for a good five six months you know and i can remember the figures we were doing about a hundred hundred twenty thousand dollars a month which was good for that size restaurant and right from one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a month down to thirty thousand dollars a month for about four oh months so basically at that point we were undercapitalized so i mean we just didn't have the funds to continue and then once it opened back up it seems like it never reached that peak where we were you know it got right back up to like that 85 90 000 and what happened why well, i brought that 65 percent of the business people are fickle in the restaurant business if you close down for a certain amount of time that part of your business finds another cool place to go to and they never yep go. So yep. that's what happened. I mean, bottom line, I mean, you make mistakes along the way. And like you said, we, we walked, I walked out of that restaurant with about 50 bucks in my pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. So we lost everything. We lost our beautiful home. Uh, I could yeah. remember, I remember Chad driving me to the Cadillac dealer 
and hand, giving the guy at the desk, it dropped the keys on his desk. I go, there's a Cadillac out in your parking lot. Um, <laughs> it's mine. I haven't made a payment in about six months, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out, you know, and I was at, by, by the direction of my bankruptcy lawyer saying, just turn it in. Just drive it to the dealership and go, here's your car. I go, really? Well, yeah. so wow. Exactly that. Chad goes, you all right, Dad? I go, it's never been better. I don't have that payment hanging over my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, yeah. with that, I, I, I needed to make money. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was doing. At that point, my brother, my younger brother, was in Vegas, and he was doing video email and stuff. Actually, some of the stuff that we're using right now, which back then, back in 2006, 2007, it was unheard of. This was unheard of, okay? So he yeah. got involved with a company. It was a multi-level marketing company. And he says, Don, come on out with me. I'll show you how to do it. And at that time, he was making $100,000 a month in network marketing. Oh, yeah. wow. So he was doing like crazy, crazy good with it. So I said, hey, my brother could do it. I could do it. So I went out there <laughs> and I tried and, and tried. And he's, he helped me a lot. I mean, I ended up making about forty-five dollars to $50,000 a year network marketing. And I went, plus, okay. I, started, plus I started bartending at the Rio down in uh, Las Vegas. So, um, stood there for, I was there, I think three years, three and a half years. Lori came down, she was living here. I was there. We kept flying back and forth. And then finally she said, you know what? This is stupid. I'm just coming. She hated to leave. Um, she got there, but funny thing, we're sitting out in the patio having coffee and it was right around the end of February, right around this time of year. And we're having coffee and she looks at me across the table and she goes, it was early in the morning. She goes, is it like this every day? And I go, what do you mean that I have coffee here at this table every day? She goes, no, is it like this every day? And she points to the sky because she was there almost a week then. I go, pretty much. I think there's three days three days out of the year that the sun isn't shining. And that's pretty much it. She goes, I can get used to this, you know. <laughs> so we, 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 we worked there. I did the network marketing. Uh, the, net, the business, the company that my brother was with started falling apart. And the reason why I started falling apart, there was some internal problems, but other companies were doing video better than we were doing it, okay? Right. And basically, the industry of that technology caught up with us, and that company sort of went to the wayside. That income that I once had was disappearing in network marketing. So, But I worked at the Rio, and the crazy thing at the Rio, Las Vegas... So I got my first paycheck. I tell people this story all the time. So I, I didn't want to work nights in Las Vegas. I, I hated, I didn't want that nightlife stuff, you know, especially there. It gets pretty crazy. So yeah. a friend of mine knew a guy opening up a bar called McFadden's at the Rio. And he goes, Donnie, they're looking for a bartender during the day. Why don't you give Joe a call? So I call him up. He says, yeah, come on in. So he looks at me and he, you know, I was, I don't know how old I was back then. So I was... Forty nine fifty five, somewhere in that area, and he goes, oh, like that. And I go, I go, hey, you know. He goes, what do you want to work nights? I went, nope, just days. He goes, perfect. He goes, you got any experience? And I told him all my experience. So I ended up opening the bar for him and actually controlling all his inventory. But crazy thing, in, in Las Vegas, the minimum wage back then was eighteen dollars an hour for a bartender. Okay. Holy crap! There's no state sales tax. Right. Okay. So, and I was making about, I was working four to five days a week, um, making about three, 350 a day. So, oh. so I was working eight hours a day, three, 350 a day, $18 an hour. I got my first paycheck and I figured the, the figures out. And it was like 12, 1300 bucks, 1400 bucks, whatever it was. And I went to Joe, I go, Joe, you guys made a mistake on my paycheck. This, this is wrong. I go, you guys are paying me $18 an hour. I know that's wrong. It must be $8 an hour. You put a one in front of me. He goes, <laughs> I go, you don't pay $18 an hour. He goes, that's the, and, and Rio was one of the most, uh, one of the, I'm sorry, my phone. Um, no worries. Rio's was one of the only non-union um, hotels in, in Vegas. He goes, we have to pay union wage uh, to stay non-union. He goes, and wow. a little bit less than union wage. So if you want a bartender's job making 18, 19, right now they probably got to be 20, $22 an hour. Um, Oh my you God! Know, in the union, their benefits, their benefit packages, they say, is better than the automotive industry. So, 
So wow. at a union, union hotel. So I was making bank in Vegas. Um, how did I get back to Buffalo? Um, Family, uh, my, right? My, yeah. No, it really wasn't. It was, I loved Vegas. I mean, I read more books in Vegas than I read in my whole entire lifetime. I used to wake up early in the morning. You used to go out on the patio. And we lived on the uh, 16th uh, tee of a golf course. We were in a private community. And I used to go on the patio and wake up. It was like 5.30. It was bright. The sun was out. It was gorgeous. Five, six o'clock in the morning. And I sit there with a cup of coffee and be reading. About an hour and a half later, here comes the guys on the 16th. Day. Hey, Donnie, how are you? But honestly, God, every morning I woke up, I read, read a book, read a book, read a book, read a book. I was so relaxed and peaceful. Um, I didn't even drink in Vegas, if you could believe that. And really? I got, yeah, no, I, I was like, nah, I'm good. For the two years I was there, if I drank six beers, that was a lot. I mean, it was crazy coming from where I came from, where when we were at Simi's, I, I, I think there wasn't six hours that I didn't drink, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, we, we uh, I got a phone call, and it was a, a friend uh, that owned a business here in, in um, Chictawaga, and he says, Donnie, why don't you come and be my my operations manager and marketing manager. And I went, I don't want to come back. You know, Mark, I do not want to come back. And he goes, he goes, what, what do I got to pay you to get back? And I says, a lot. And he goes, name your price. I said, let me talk to my wife. So I hung up. I said, I'll call you back. So Lori looks at me. She goes, name your price. We're going back to see the boys. Like that. So <laughs> I, I gave him a price. That, and I, it was like $120,000 a year or something like that. Because that's what's going to take me to move back. He goes, well, I want, you fl I want to fly you out here, um, come back, take a look at what do I do, and then you make the decision, and we'll talk money. So we, we got close to that number, and we moved back. And Chad and Shay at that time were like, what are you moving back for? We were just making a decision to come down there, you know? So they <laughs> and I made the wrong decision for them, you know? So, so But we came back, which worked out good, because a year after that, Chad got married. He, a couple years after that, Shay got married, and grandkids were, were right there as they were getting married, as we both know. So Yeah. So so we came back, and that company actually f went belly up. Again, a company undercapitalized, mismanaged, all that stuff by the owner, and then that company actually went belly up. And then there again, here I'm sitting on my patio. We were renting a... Uh, we were renting a home um, in Waynesville, and I, I looked at my wife. I go, "Here we are again." I'm like, "How am I gonna? What am I gonna do to make a living?" You know. So that's how I ended up back at Russell's. Um, and actually, I, let's go step it back. I actually got my real estate license working for this guy because the three there was three of us. We were all gonna start investing into building homes. Oh, guess nice. What, guess when that was? You talk about time. Oh, everything? yeah. 08 or no? 08. <laughs> 08, 09. Oh, it was. It was during the, the, 08, the housing crisis. Back in 08, right? So, I mean, the housing market was just, and here I got this real estate license to do what, right? So, oh. but it's so funny. I got my, my first client. Um, oh, God, I, I still talk to her to this day. And she bought a house over on Riverside or Black Rock area, and it was a, a $30,000 home. And she, mm -hmm. they, they knew me. They said, Donnie, can you help us? Can you help us? Um, can you help us um, buy a home? I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, I didn't know I had to do anything about real estate. I just took the, got my license so I could do what I thought I was going to do. So I helped right. them buy this home, and I, my commission was nine hundred dollars. And I was just like, this is crazy. That was too easy. I made nine hundred dollars. It was just too easy, and it was it was just an easy deal. It was a cash deal. You know, they went and inspected it. Here you go. Close in thirty days. We were done. You know, I wish they were all like that, but. They're, they're not. Yeah. So, so with that, I was with Jimmy Lavallo, and and I tinkered with the real estate business. You know, I really didn't take it as as a, as a real job, I guess. You know. And uh, right, you were you were bartending at the time, or you were I, switching over to bartending. Yep, I ended up getting a job at Salvatore's Tanga or Russell's Steaks, Chops, and More. Um, I ended up working for him then, and then working the real estate business a little bit more than that, and then uh, <laughs> we bought Curly's. Now uh, me, she That's was right. a chef. Yeah, so we ended up. I forgot about Curly's. Into Curly's, I left Russell's, and dove back into Curly's, and that was a strictly a partnership. Um, the partner had all the money, I had all the knowledge, Shay and I, and we went in there, and Shay was phenomenal in the kitchen. I was okay in the front of the house, 
but we had this crazy Greek guy that was crazy and basically we didn't get along and didn't. He wanted to put spaghetti on the menu. The restaurant was a Caribbean restaurant. Um, you don't put spaghetti yeah. in that type of atmosphere. So we, he kept saying, I want lasagna, I want, um, you know, uh, lobster raviolis and all this stuff. And it was a big clash, you know, to the point where it got to the point that we walked out of there. And uh, I went back to Russell's. Oh, actually, no, I went back to my, I went to Manja's, Manja's to Black and Blue, Black and Blue to back to Russell's. So, um, and I was there, I was at Russell's for, oh God, a total of 12 and a half years. And just wow. actually, I'm done with Russell's. I'm, I, my bartending career is now over. So Officially over because, officially. I mean, now leading into it, you're, you're, you're taking off in, in real estate. Like real estate is going pretty well. Yep, you don't want, and, and there's a lesson to be learned. So I, had, I got my real estate license, and I was with a broker, my first broker, um, and I knew there was more to the industry. I just didn't know what, you know. And this happens as I talk to other real estate agents just getting into this business. They all think that you get your license. First of all, you go get your license, and the school doesn't teach you anything about real estate. Right. They teach everything about law. So you get out of your license, you get your, get out of school, you got your license. And the crazy thing about the license, the license costs you about $1,000. All together, all in between the school, the license, and uh, fees for New York State, you're probably about 1500 bucks in. Which to open up your own business, Jeremy, you, your business. It's not bad. 1500 bucks to open up your own business and, and the, the sky's the limit. But the only thing is, is knowing where that sky is, how to get into that limit, you know? Um, right. And, you know, I, I, I was with one broker. I left that broker, went to another broker. And I didn't leave brokers because I thought it would make give me more business because I knew it wasn't about the broker. I knew it was about you. It's a, the, any real estate agent, it, it's about you. It's not your broker. Your broker don't do nothing for you. And um, so, when, but I was looking for that person or mentor to say, hey, this is how you do it. Because again, the school don't teach you how to do it. And right. so one broker, second broker, third broker, fourth broker, my fifth broker. And that was with, um, before I left here, I ended up teaming up with Lori's cousin, Joanne Simi. And she taught me a lot. Joanne's got 30 years in his business, an amazing real estate agent, has a ton of knowledge. But she always talked about this. Um, she had a coach. I always talked about this coach. So I looked into it. And some of these coaches are a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month. I ain't mean, making Oof. that much money in real estate a month, let alone do that, you know. Or right, oh, I'm not going to do that. So I didn't do it, and and I didn't do it, and I kept struggling and trying this, and and I was buying the best internet toy out there to make my business grow. Oh, that looks like it'll work. Right. That guy said he's getting leads. I'm going to buy that. So I kept buying all, all these trinkets and spending all kinds of stupid money when I really realized it, that the money that I'm spending on these things to try to make money or get leads, I could have You could spent on the coach. Coach. Yeah. So I hooked up with a coach about a year ago, just about a year ago. Um, actually, the pandemic, everyone says it was a bad thing. For me, it was a very, very good thing. It gave me the time because I wasn't working. gave me the time to focus on my real estate business. So last year, um, and it, you know what? Coaches are great. They're like I was a consultant, as I said earlier in the show, is that coaches are great. They tell you, hey, do this, do this, do this. This is the result you should be getting. Um, and guess what? You get off the call with them. If you don't do this, this, and this, and work hard doing what they're telling you to do, you're back on the call again looking like, no, I didn't do anything. Well, then you ain't growing, you know? And right. the coach don't care. I mean, he really doesn't care because you're paying him monthly anyway. He's getting money regardless. Yeah. I got it. The other thing is you're going to run out of money and then eventually drop him. So he does care a little bit because... The more he keeps coaching, the better your business should go, the more you're going to stay on with him, okay, so, right. or her. So so basically, this coach, this, this team, uh, Kinder Reese, down in, um, they're out of Texas, um, actually been coaching me quite a bit. And with that, the best year I ever had in real estate by myself, doing it by myself, was about $3, $3 million in sales, okay? Average sale price of a home, 190, 195000 So not, not a bad okay. game, you know, not a bad yeah. game. Um, I hooked up with the coach, started putting some of the processes and systems together and, and really taking a look at what I do on a daily basis and actually teaching me what real estate is. Um, it's not just a license. 
um, I actually uh, probably one and a half times my business, okay, over the last year. So, you know, and, 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 and that's where working with, still working 35, 40 hours at Russell's, where I wasn't just the bartender. I did all their ordering for them. I did all their wine menus, their cocktail menus. I did all that. So I was like a bar manager without the title. Um, right. And there was reasons. They lost their manager, and they didn't have anyone with any knowledge that could take that part of the business over. So they asked me, will you, will you pick this up for, for me? And, you know, I do enjoy that business, but the, the real estate business was starting to really become something, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was it, so you know, invest into yourself, you know. So, 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 so my 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 question to you is, what keeps you motivated? So, so you said you you hit three million by yourself. Then you got a coach, and you almost almost doubled it, mm -hmm. uh, or or, or no, more. I did and double. Yeah, I, I, you doubled it. Double yeah, double it plus. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So double plus, and and. What and and talking to you uh, yesterday, you know, in a pre-conference, you said I want to go X amount more, and I want to go X amount more the, the following year. What keeps you motivated to keep going? It's not just pure money, because money, like once you make over a certain amount of money, it doesn't bring any more happiness. It could buy more shit, but people, you know, you know they they showed it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you ever listened to a book called Drive Two Point um, No, with uh, the last name's Pink. Um, it's a great book and, it, and it's based on um, motivating factors and money is, is a temporary motivated factor. And I never believed that. I, I never, I always said no money will always be the biggest motivating factor that a human being could have. And it's not, it's temporary. And he goes through that whole scenario, why it's not and what really drives you and all that. And, you know, there's, there's always something that drives a person, the, the multimillionaire to the billionaire to the guy that just shows up and goes to work on, on the railroad every day, there's, there's a why. And, and the thing is, you got to figure out what that why is in, in your life. You know, my why, um, it, it's real simple. You know, when I got into the restaurant business and not even the restaurant business, my, I always worked hard for my kids. Uh, you know, the relationship I have with my two boys. Yep. And I always said to them, I'm going to leave you an empire like that. And I had empires and, and I lost. I mean, I lost millions of dollars. I, I made millions of dollars. I lost million dollars to the point where, like I said, I, I borrowed $150 from my, from my brother to put gas in my truck to go to Las Vegas because I didn't have it. My brother also wow. rented the U-Haul for me, the, the tow behind my truck, so I could take some of my stuff to Las Vegas. So I didn't have any, any money whatsoever. Um, and, and I know that feeling. So I, the empire that I was supposed to leave my, my, my kids and my family wasn't there. Um, so the why, you know, my why is, is leaving them with a with couple things. One is never, never, never give up. You know, Winston Ch Churchill says that. I'll repeat it every day. Don't ever give up. I've been down kicked. And, you know, I was really depressed at one time about all that, how, how my life was ending up at that point. But you know what? It's a great lesson. I recommend Jeremy in your lifetime to lose a million dollars and see how it feels. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't wish it on anybody, but I tell you, if it's going to happen, um, you're the type of person because I know you and know your family that that you're going to fight back. Um, and when you fight back, you become smarter, stronger, and and a bigger why. You know. Yeah. Um, what motivates me? You know, waking up every morning, getting out of bed and saying, how can I blow this thing away? What's my why? And once you know that, you got it. So I, I love that. I love that. And, and now you, you mentioned waking up every morning. I, I, I'm trying to see if there's a direct correlation. So every every uh, guest I ask this question to because I want to see uh, people that I have on Mondays are successful in their arena, successful in like, you know, whether it's sports, business or relationship. I want to know, is there a direct correlation of success and what time of the day they wake up? So, like, what time of the day do you typically wake up? Are you an early riser? Are you a late riser? Are you Usually, a seven-day a week? The latest I'll be up in the morning is six in the morning. On average, wow. I'm up by, by, by quarter after five, 5.30. Uh, two reasons why. One, I can't sleep. Number two, my dog will start pawing me in the head by that time. <laughs> To, to not to go out, but just to eat. He wants to get up and eat. So, but I'm up yeah. anyway. I'm up. Um, sometimes I beat him even up and wake him up. So, um, 
And what do I, I mean, I have a routine in the morning. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, I go downstairs, I make my coffee, I feed the dog, let the dog out. I go and I sit in the living room and I turn on one of the TV stations and I don't listen to the news. I watch the news until the weather comes out because I want to know what my day is going to look like. Is it going to be rainy and gloomy? Is it going to be sunny and 80? Okay? And I look at the long range. Once I see the full weather report, I don't know why, but it's something I do. Then after that, I sit down and I read a book. Like I said, right now I'm reading Drive 2.2 for the third time I read it. Um, okay. So I, I read a book. And I'll read that book for about a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever that is. Is, and then I'll, I'll I just bought a uh, uh, a tempo. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, yep. tempo. So I just bought that tempo. So I go and I work out for a half hour, forty five minutes. That brings me up right around seven, seven fifteen. Take my shower, and then at eight o'clock I start my prospecting calls. Um, so I have a routine to my week, and then through my routine, my calendar is I have it all spaced out. Um, I got some very small white spaces in the calendar for what ifs or, hey, what about that stuff? And I fit those into those spaces. And I follow that routine all the way through um, the week. And actually, Sunday's the only thing day that I really don't have anything on it. And I leave that completely open. There is showings on Sundays. There is open houses on Sundays. But Sunday some is, I try to keep that as a free day. Um, Lori's home. We try to do something together. But... Um, and, and, and the other part and is, is have a partner, if, you, if you're involved in a relationship, that supports you 100%. I mean, not, not that they say it, but they believe in it and they believe in you. Um, that right. You it. And my wife has been, I mean, my wife and my kids have always believed it. Yeah, fell on his butt, he'll get back up again and he'll be fine, you know. So, um, <laughs> in fact, i tell you a quick story. I picked up, my, my sister lives in... Um, Virginia, south, way down south in Virginia, and she came up to visit. Uh, it was about a year, year and a half ago, and her mother-in-law lives right around the corner from me, and she was staying there. She goes, and I said, let me pick you up, take you out for lunch. So, I went and picked her up, and, and I had my Mercedes at that time, and I picked her up. I stood in front of her house, and I beeped the horn, and she came walking out, and uh, she gets in the car. She goes, hmm, nice car, and I went, yeah, it's all right, it's a car like that, you know. So we're driving, and she goes. Donnie, I need to ask you a question. <laughs> I says, yeah, what's up? She goes, no, seriously. And I went, sure, what's, what's up? She goes, are you in the mafia? <laughs> 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 I started laughing. I go, what? Like that. She goes, you're always on top. She goes, you lost everything. And look at you now. Look at your house. Look what you're driving. Look what you do. You're going on vacation. You're doing this. You're doing that. And I looked at her. I says, you know what, Cheryl? It's all hard work. I says, I don't stop. And she goes, it's true. And I says, and what was that question anyway? She goes, well, me and the sisters were talking. You know, how do you <laughs> back all the time, you know? And how do you keep doing that? And, and it's self-motivation with, I mean, my kids, if I sat down and not did something and disappointed them, they kicked my ass. My wife won't allow it. So, I mean, there's, there's that drive. I mean, there's your why. Again, there's part of that why, you know? Why do you get out of bed every day? I, I love that. I think that's, I mean, it's, it's very true. Like just knowing you and, and I don't, I don't see a, a, a lazy, you know, bone in your body. Like you're, you're, you're always on the go. You're always energetic. You're always ready on the move. So it's, it's very, it's very true. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a great way to, you know, look at life and say like, Hey, listen, I, I need to do this because, you know, I want to leave this for my kids. I want to do this. I want to do that. So I, I, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. And I mean, that, it, it, it's a simple question. You know, people sit there and say, why me, why me, why me? And, and, and you just turn around and look at them and say, well, what are you doing to change it? Right. It's very easy to be the victim. Uh, you know, it, there's, there's a, a, a quote from, uh, I think it was Joe Rogan said it. He said, you know, start your, like today, start like you are your own hero in your own movie, Right. Mm -hmm. You might be down in your luck. You might like really be at, at the lowest point. Make a comeback. Everybody loves a comeback story. Yeah. And, and, and it's true. I mean, like, I'll, I'll, so, I'll go that. And again, as everybody loves a comeback, they love hearing that story. 
because uh, it's a motivating story. But on the other right. hand, as you're fighting your way back, there's people, and believe me, I've had them in, in, in my closet that they try to knock you down every minute you got. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. you know, I mean in, in the restaurant industry, especially in the small little village we were in, I mean, there were some people that just wanted simmies to fall. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yep. Mean, that that is as successful you are. There's so many people and things out there that want you to fall and laugh at you when you make a make a mistake. I mean, if I if I set my hung my hat on the mistakes I made in my life, I I, I wouldn't be anywhere. You know, and, yeah. and that's just it. Is yeah, you're gonna make mistakes, and in fact, you hope you do make them. That because if you're making mistakes, you're trying. Right. Right. You know. So. so- so you, you obviously, and we're getting to the end here, you obviously had a lot of stress at some point, right? Oh, you're, yeah. you're bald now. You weren't bald before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, but so I always ask again because I find that successful people have a unique way of dealing with stress. So how do you relieve stress in your life? Is it, do you meditate? Do you work out? Are you a stress eater? Are you a stress drinker? You know, what do you do? Do you just take a breath, you know? You know what? Um... Yeah, I mean, Jeremy, I'm a, a perfect sign of health. At 45, I had my first heart attack, and then 10 years later, I had the second one. Um, and it <laughs> was more, it was more stress related and um, hereditary related than anything else. It had nothing to do with my diet. It had nothing to do with anything else. Uh, my dad blessed us, most of my family, with bad arteries around the heart. My dad died of that, and uh, we're all all the kids. All but one sister had a heart attack, um, and there's oh, eight, wow. of us, and there's eight of us. So, um, and all all related, the same thing. It's all artery based problems. Um, so stress, yeah. That that do I carry it? Yep. Um, I don't sleep because of it um, because your mind constantly turns. Um, but I and, and there's days that you just sit here and you just hold your head. And you're like, what am I doing? You know. That's going to happen, and, it, and it's not that time. I always look at that part of my life, and I, I sit back, and, and I, is it part of meditation? Yes, I guess you could say that. You sit there, and you take those 10 deep breaths, inhale and exhale, get yourself back together, get yourself thinking about what you have to do. Or what you what, It's not what you have to do. What do you have on paper? And if you don't have it on paper where you're going, it, it, it ain't worth it. Anybody could say, I'm going to go there, and I mean... If you look at my whiteboard, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look at my whiteboard, there's there's some stuff written on there. And every day I walk in, I mean, I read it. Every day I go to bed, I, I say it. And, you know, basically the one one thing it says, I did, right, $14 million in sales, $400,000 in gross commission income, and over 70 plus transactions. Okay, I did it, December 31st, 2021. I say it every day. Also on there too, and I and I said this to you. Another good book is the Compound Effect. There's a small, right thing, right order on a consistent basis over time will have a major effect of what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so so I mean yeah. that's, my, that's like my key phrase because when I start, in fact, I was just on the phone with my coach before you came on. I have a problem that I'm not doing enough. I'm <clears> not <throat> satisfied with the results. I mean. It's February 24th right now. I already have 14 transactions in. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm 14 transactions in February 24th. Okay. Um, my goal is to have 70 plus. So I'm yeah. So you need you need to up it, right? Yeah. I'm 12 transactions for the first two months. So that's six transactions. I'm right on track. You know, and yeah. I'm not even in the peak areas yet. I'm not even in peak housing yet. So, but I'm, I'm, I just talked to my coach. I go, when is it all going to come together? When is it just going to come? Click. You know, click. And, and, and he says, over time. And never be satisfied with what you're doing in your goals. Always push the goals all the way to the limit. And I mean, the goal I have here is a pretty hefty one. Um, and again, there's teams and there's real estate teams out there that have six, seven, eight people that don't even come close to those numbers. I'm still by myself. I have a team being assembled now. Okay. I'm right. Working on that. And I haven't formally announced that because I want to make sure I have the systems and the processes in place to support the team. 
because right. if I don't, I'm just going to fail them. So, so it, it's it's just planning, you know, planning, setting, yeah. setting your goals. Make sure those goals are written down, and 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 follow them. I mean, you just can't write them down and, and, and stick them in a drawer somewhere. So, well, I, I, we, I, we we've come to the last question, and I, I I ask this. It's a fun question. I your 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 youngest son Shay. It gave probably the funniest answer I've had. Um, but if there was a billboard of you in Times Square, right? It could be you doing real estate. It could be you with your kids, your grandkids, your wife. doesn't matter. Doing whatever you want. What would it say on it? Millions of people are going to walk by it. What would it say on it? I said, what would I want it to say? What, what, what are people saying it should say? I mean, What would you want it to say on it? So it's a message that you pay, like, uh, like let's just say the billboard was free. You get a billboard. You can have the message say whatever you want on it, but you have wow. to be on it. That's, the, I never thought of that question. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not as comical as Shay is with the stuff they were all Shay's, about. Shay's um, response was, it's hard to take yourself seriously when you're naked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. It's, it's a visual. It's a visual. You know it's what? a visual. It's, it's, I, I guess you got to say something. I, I guess I would have to have, to have it say something like, I've fallen and I've gotten up. <laughs> I don't know. But that's, a, that, know, that, that, that's, Plays to your story, a hundred percent. You know, and I didn't have a beeper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had no beeper, but I had fallen and I got up. So something like that. You know what I mean? I've been kicked yeah. out so many different times. It just, it, it is. You know, what I mean, it just basically don't. And I and I tell my kids, don't get, don't ever give up. I mean, I could remember just quick story, and not to prolong this thing, but my son Shay started a job at Curly when he when we closed Simmy's down. He got a job at. He was in a couple of different places, but he ended up going to Curly's. And I think it was either Mother's Day or Easter. He got real. I mean, he was sick. I mean, he had the flu like you wouldn't believe. And he woke up, and it was like almost his first week of working there. And I and he comes comes downstairs. He goes, Dad, I'm sick. He goes, I can't get to work. I'm sick. I'm sick. He goes, I got to call him sick. I go, no, you're not. I go, you're going to go to work, and you're going to work until they send you home because you're too sick to work. I go, you go to work sick. You know what I mean? I mean this is this is pre COVID days. So. Pre yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is is he looked at me and I go, You're going to work like that. So he ends up going to work and I had I, I think I ended up going there it was like a brunch. I think I went in there for brunch. And um we went in there later into the brunch and uh the the owner who, who was Kirk at the time just said, uh, you take your son home, he's pretty damn sick. And he thanked Shay for coming in because it was a tough day. Even though he was sick and not 100%, his 80% was equal to somebody else's 100%. And, that, and that right. was, that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that. That's, that's how I am. I, you know, in all my years, all my years of working, Jeremy, I never, ever, ever, ever called in sick. Never. You, you just go in and make them send you home if they think that you're too sick. That's it. That's it. And most of the time, based on old philosophy, they never sent you home. Right. You know, today, today's a different different world. And, oh, no, you're sick. You better go home and take care of yourself. Back then, was, I don't care if you're sick. You just keep working. You know, so, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, but I never, never, and my kids had that same philosophy. I mean, that, and, and that's, I guess that billboard is, is, is just keep, keep moving. Keep moving forward. It's all going to come together. Um, you might not get to where you want to be, but you're going to get pretty damn close. So, right. Yeah. I mean, they, they always say, you know, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, hit the stars, reach for the moon type deal, you know, yeah. that or, or vice versa. So, so it, it, it makes sense. Like you, you definitely want to just keep moving forward and keep going. So <laughs> I, I appreciate your time, man. I, uh, I, I love, I love the story. You know, I, when, when I, when I had this podcast and I started it, I was like, you know, I made a list of people I wanted to have on and you were one of them, but I was like, you know, I don't know. He's 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 got his own stuff. Like maybe he doesn't want to, you know, share that side of it. But I'm yeah. glad you did because yeah. it's a very motivating story for me. You know, like to see uh, such a a good friend of mine's family. You know, you know, do go through that. I was like, holy crap, man. Oh, there, there's a lot more in that story. I mean, my kids lost their identity there for a little bit. You know, yeah, they, they were they were they were the kings of Lancaster, young little kids. You know what I mean? And, and that that was yeah. a big identity to them. So. 
it's a it's a big deal when when your your family owns a restaurant and bar and you're in high school and then college and then you know so yeah it's you you guys you guys definitely you know went through a lot there but I, I i again i thank you for sharing it was it was awesome i definitely like i said the story knowing the story i you know i always think like man you went through so much and you came through it you know you know went through so much shit and came through smelling like roses <laughs> uh, no, so not where i want to be yet we're almost there though we're getting close so, so but again so. You know the Zappy Realty team. We're up and running. Um, yeah, where where can where can they find uh, like your website and stuff like that? DonZappia.com. dot com and Don uh, right com. there. And uh, I mean, I'm on Facebook, all that stuff. So yeah, uh, I'll 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 make sure to tag your 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 stuff in uh, my posts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in Facebook. Are you on Instagram as well? Yep. Okay, yep. so I'll I'll make sure that everything's tagged and. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get this going. So if, if anybody has any questions on real estate, whether it's buying a house, selling a house, or just about the market, donzapia.com. Uh, All right. Appreciate it, Jeremy. Always a pleasure.